You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. Within the framework of the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the aspirations of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Oil and Gas Holding Company, Noga Holding, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, today issued an edict appointing representatives of Noga Holding at the Board of Directors of the Bahrain Liquefied Natural Gas Company, Bahrain LNG. Under the edict, Yusuf Isa Bubshait as Bahrain LNG Board of Directors Chairman and Mazen Mohamed Matar as board member. Bahrain LNG was established as an LNG import terminal to secure existing gas supplies, meet demand during peak periods, promote growth in the kingdom, and support global goals aiming to reduce greenhouse gases. The edict is part of Noga Holdings' efforts to rely on local competencies to promote development in its subsidiaries in line with its future strategies and in order to ensure sustainability. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, leader of the Royal Endurance Team, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, dedicated the achievement of the Royal Endurance Team by winning the title of the custodian of the two holy mosques Endurance Cup to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa for the second achievement, a week after the international victory that was achieved in the World Endurance Championship. The statement came after the team won the championship title through rider Mohammed Abdul Hamid Al Hashimi with the horse lion in the championship that was held in Al-Ula Governorate in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for a distance of 120 kilometers with the participation of 204 male and female riders from 40 countries around the world. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed that this achievement is the fruit of the support, interest and follow-up of His Majesty the King for the sports of endurance, especially that the achievement of the Cup of the Custodian of the Two Holy Mosques for Endurance embodied the successful march of the Bahraini endurance sport and this achievement is considered an extension of a series of global and international achievements by the Royal Endurance Team in foreign forums, the latest of which was winning the World Endurance Championship held in the United Arab Emirates. His Highness Sheikh Nasser indicated that the Royal Endurance Team scored a prominent stage in this participation, which is considered one of the major championships in the world and always witnesses strong and exciting competition throughout the stages in light of the difficult stages of the championship. He praised the riders of the Royal Team for endurance and their great efforts in achieving these honorable results. His Highness Sheikh Nasser was keen to follow up with the riders and the staff of the Royal Endurance Team from early morning until the end of the race, which lasted for more than seven hours. President of the Saudi Equestrian Federation, Prince Abdullah bin Fahad bin Abdullah Al Saud, crowned the rider of the Royal Endurance Team, Mohammed Abdul Hamid Al Hashimi, with the custody of the Two Holy Mosques Endurance Cup 2023.
The Russian Equestrian and Horse Racing Club organized the 24th race of the seasons in the presence of a number of their highnesses and horse racing fans. It was held for the Cup of the late Sheikh Rashid bin Mohammed Al Khalifa and the Russian Equestrian and Horse Racing Club. The race held at the club's racetrack in Arafa Sakhir comprised of eight events and trophies were presented to the winners at the end of the race. The Minister of Tourism, Fatma bin Jafar al sarafi said that the Kingdom welcomes all tourists who are visiting to attend the F1 Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix 2023 and the events and programs held on its sidelines. The Minister was speaking while receiving Oman's Minister of Heritage and Tourism, Salim Mohammed al Mahrugi. The Minister discussed with her Omani counterpart tourism cooperation between the two countries as part of the Memoranda of Understanding signed between them in this field, affirming the depth of the fraternal bilateral relations at the advanced level they have reached across various fields. She wished the Omani delegation a happy stay in the kingdom, highlighting Bahrain's keenness to prepare an integrated program for visitors who are going to attend the F1 Gulf Air Bahrain GP 2023. Education Minister Dr. Mohammed bin Mbarak Jum'a has announced that 95 projects from 56 countries are vying from the 2022 UNESCO King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Prize for the use of information and communication technologies in education. Dr. Jum'a said that this underscores the great value of the prestigious prize launched by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and endorsed by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. Fernando Alonso kept Red Bull's Max Verstappen off the top of the timesheets in final practice for the season opening Bahrain Grand Prix today as Aston Martin continued to impress in a battle of double Formula One world champions. The 41-year-old Spaniard lapped 0.005 seconds faster than title holder Verstappen with Red Bull's Sergio Perez third quickest and 0.106 off the pace. Mercedes's seven times world champion Lewis Hamilton was fourth quickest ahead of Ferrari's Charles Leclerc and his own teammate George George Russell in the last track action before qualifying at Sakhir. Alonso was also fastest in yesterday's final practice in an eye-catching effort for a team who finished seventh overall last season, but appeared to have made a big leap forward with their new car. Alonso, as hungry and motivated as ever, has joined from Renault owned Alpine. The meetings of the World Motorsports Council were concluded in conjunction with the hosting of the Bahrain International Circuit, the home of motorsports in the Middle East of the Bahrain Grand Prix Gulf Air Formula One, the first round of the World Championship. The meeting was chaired by the president of the International Automobile Federation, Mohammed bin Sulaim, in the presence of the vice president of the International Automobile Federation for the Middle East and North Africa, president of the Bahrain Motor Federation, Sheikh Abdullah bin Isa Al Khalifa, members of the World Motorsports Council and heads of the committees of the International Federation. At the beginning of the meeting, the FIA president expressed his thanks for the support received by the Federation. The meeting discussed the calendar of World Championships for motorsports and Formula One races and the proposed Proposals submitted by the Vice Presidents were reviewed and a number of laws and developments in the world of motorsports were discussed. 
The Kingdom of Bahrain continues to achieve great success in hosting and organizing the 2023 Bahrain Grand Prix Formula One race. And in this context, the Ministry of Interior and its various departments has demonstrated all capabilities to make the necessary security arrangements and develop effective plans and programs for the success and distinction of the latest Bahrain Gulf Air Grand Prix Formula One race. Motorsports enthusiasts and fans also witnessed an atmosphere of fun and entertainment at exhibition stalls of the Ministry of Interior, which includes several departments, the General Department of Traffic, investigation and criminal evidence in addition to the National Center for Cybersecurity and several other departments. This continuous success comes from the readiness and high level of professionalism enjoyed by the Ministry of Interior and the expertise that had a great impact in highlighting the global race in an honorable manner. Well, it's wonderful to be here. In fact, the, the hospitality has been fantastic. Thanks for children, thanks for adults. We saw the, uh, some of the practice laps and the children just really enjoyed. Very well organized. Uh, we very, very feel very welcome and really an absolute success. Our first time here. People are kind and the ambience is amazing and, and the police have been very great. To see the old old motors in the history, what was used and what's used now. It's quite actually interesting to see what they used back in the days and how it's developed and how, what we luckily fortunate to have now. <laughs> well, the booth is amazing because you can tell that you can see the history of kind of some of the security vehicles that we've seen around town. I've lived here for 10 years, so obviously we see a lot of different things around town now. What do you say, Jamesy? Yeah. Yeah? That's good. I'm excited to be here. We came from Seattle to visit my brother-in-law, and this country is beautiful. It's incredible. And to be at a venue like this is unbelievable in Bahrain. Easy. Easy, great. And no, the traffic it was fine, and the police was everywhere, so it was great. Yeah, the arrangements were very organization was brilliant. It was brilliant. It was very good. Coming in, everybody sorted out all of the car parking, and all of that was all separated. It was all very good. All very good. One. Two, three. Bahrain! The Gulf Air Formula One Bahrain Grand Prix placed the Bahraini economy on the global investment map and enabled it to attract more foreign investment. The Kingdom of Bahrain succeeded by hosting this global sporting event and strengthening its international position and emphasizing the continuation of development and economic sports progress. As this global sports forum has contributed over the past years to the development of the national economy and the revitalization of various economic sectors such as the tourism sector where the hotel occupancy rate rises to 100% in addition to the recovery of the sectors of transportation, communication, restaurants and commercial complexes. This race contributes to highlighting Bahrain's distinguished facade and hosting international competitions and confirms its permanent success and its progress in achieving economic and sports gains. Bahrain International Circuit, the home of motorsports in the Middle East today, announced that the 2023 Formula One Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix will be its most sustainable race ever. It also announced future plans to ensure it further reduces its impact on the planet and support F1's 2030 net zero goal as well as those of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Over the last 12 months, analysis from BIC's solar partner IREC Energy shows that BIC's solar farm has produced 5.28 megawatt of clean energy, enough renewable energy to cover all of the circuit usage for F1 with significant capacity to spare, the equivalent of offsetting 3,108 tons of carbon. Renewable energy at circuits is a key part of how F1 will meet its net zero goal, in addition to the continued transition to more sustainable energy sources across its operations from 100% sustainable fuel in cars by 2026 to more efficient logistics operations through to on-site generator requirements. The CEO of the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority, Dr. Nasser Ali Qaidi, received a Kuwaiti delegation headed by Acting Director General of the Public Sports Authority, Faisal Nasser al -Yatim. The two sides discussed enhancing joint cooperation between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the State of Kuwait in the field of tourism and sports, with an emphasis on the importance of exchanging expertise and best practices in this field. During the meeting, the CEO of the Bahrain Tourism Authority gave a brief presentation on tourism and entertainment activities organized by the authority in cooperation with the Bahrain International circuit to prepare an exceptional season for the Formula One Bahrain Grand Prix by Gulf Air 2023. He explained that the authority organized many marketing campaigns and promotional activities for the Formula One race, in addition to forging partnerships with international tour operators to attract larger numbers of tourists from several promising markets. 
The chief executive of the Labor Market Regulatory Authority, Nof Abdurrahman Jamshir, received a delegation from the U.S. Department of Labor and U.S. Trade Representatives. During the meeting, both parties discussed ways to strengthen relations and exchange expertise in the areas related to improving the working conditions and environment and preserving the rights of work parties. The LMRA chief executive briefed the delegation about the key initiatives and measures taken by the kingdom to advance the labor market, including the new labor registration program that was launched recently in partnership with the private sector to link work permits to vocational standards and qualifications, as well as the optional insurance system for domestic workers and the wage protection system aiming to preserve the financial national rights of employees and reduced labor dispute cases. Jamshir affirmed the government of Bahrain's ongoing commitment to assessing all aspects of work and the related policies in order to provide a wide range of protection services, as well as protecting the rights of workers and employers alike to maintain a balanced work environment that is characterized by flexibility, justice, continuity, and safeguards the rights of all parties without discrimination. The Labor Market Regulatory Authority conducted a joint inspection campaign in the Maharag Governorate in coordination with the Nationality, Passports and Residence Affairs of the Ministry of Interior and the Governorate's respective police directorate. The campaign resulted in reporting violations related to the labor market and residency laws. The cases were referred for legal action. The Information and E-Government Authority took part in the 54th session of the United Nations Statistical Commission. The authority participated in the sessions of the main meetings and accompanying workshops. Executive Vice President of Statistics and Population Registry at GA Stat, Dua Sultan Mohammed, said that this meeting is one of the largest international gatherings that includes senior statisticians from member states around the world. And GA Stat is keen to participate in it in light of the great importance this gathering represents. The commission is the highest body of the global statistical system, bringing together the chief statisticians from member states from around the world. The Statistical Commission oversees the work of the United Nations Statistics Division and it is a functional commission of the UN Economic and Social Council. The Kinema Bahrain marked the World Hearing Day, annually observed on March the 3rd. The international community sheds light on efforts aimed at ways to prevent hearing loss, which can be prevented if it causes are avoided and symptoms are diagnosed early. The World Hearing Day 2023 is held under the slogan, Ear and Hearing Care for All, Let's Make It a Reality, focusing on the importance of safe listening as a way to maintain good hearing throughout life. The aim is also to spread awareness, promote the importance of ear and hearing health, and highlight that effective and timely interventions can ensure that that people with hearing loss are able to achieve their full potential. The Ministry of Health stressed commitment to hold activities in conjunction with the world's celebration of World Hearing Day by organizing workshops, seminars and other events aimed at spreading awareness about hearing and urging early diagnosis to increase the chances of success and effectiveness of the treatment provided to avoid cases of hearing loss. The Kinema Bahrain's Hajj mission held a coordination meeting with officials of the 61 Bahraini Hajj campaigns to discuss arrangements for the Hajj season for this year, 1444. This comes as part of the early preparations aimed at ensuring that maximum efforts are made to provide the best services to pilgrims in order to achieve the royal directives of His Majesty the King and with a continuous follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Kinema Bahrain's Hajj delegation, headed by Sheikh Adnan bin Abdullah al-Ghatlan, raised its sincere thanks and appreciation to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for its great efforts in harnessing all capabilities and providing the highest levels of care. He confirmed the return of the share of Bahraini pilgrims as it was before the global spread of the corona pandemic, which is 4,625 pilgrims. The head of the Kingdom of Bahrain's Hajj mission announced that those wishing to perform the Hajj this year can start reserving their places in the licensed Bahraini Hajj campaigns, pointing out that the deadline for registering pilgrims' data in the Saudi route is May the 19th.